The Medoc Marathon takes place every year at the beginning of September, just before vine harvest. It's a celebration of sports, wine, and good cheer. It's run around the city of Poyac, which is located along the Gironde River at the heart of the Bordeaux region. The 42-kilometer route crosses the most beautiful wine-growing country and chateaus in the world. Pichon Longueville, Latour, Mouton Rothschild, Grand Prix Lacoste, and many more. Vineyards thrived in this region after the 18th century under the influence of the bourgeois and the nobility of Bordeaux. In the kingdom of the Cabernet Sauvignon Weinstock, the landscape's beauty complements that of the architecture. The national and international popularity of the Medoc Marathon can be measured when the numbers are handed out. If the French regions are highly represented, foreigners are also present. They are European for the most part, but Australians, Japanese, Canadians, and Americans can also be found. California, California, uh, El Paso, Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Ich komme aus Süddeutschland, aus Tuttlingen. The wine and the party, the, the, the carnival. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be costumes, the wine. It's supposed to be a big party. The organization to set up the second French marathon by number of participants has to be perfect. There is, of course, medical assistance, as well as an exceptionally big number of supplies that keeps the local people busy. 2,000 liters of wine, 60,000 sponges, and 100,000 paper cups will be distributed during the competition. The Medoc Marathon was created by six friends who, after running the New York Marathon, decided to start a sports event in their region. It has become, in the mind of the organizers and spokesperson Hubert Rocher, a celebration of conviviality and friendship. People come mainly with friends, in groups. They often run together. There is a lot of warmth in and around the race. There is positive interaction between the population and the runners who feel it. So they dress up, act foolish, and are a little excessive. That's how they can be when they come here. That's why all they usually want to do is come back. The day before the race, the contestants have a huge pasta dinner together. They also savor music, dance, and of course, taste the different Medoc wines. At the camping sites near Poyac, everyone wakes up bright and early to put on makeup, do their hair, and get dressed up. This is what makes the marathon so attractive, the thousands of disguises that turn the race into a fun carnival. Everybody is free to create his or her own characters, inspired by myths and ancient or contemporary heroes. Imagination and humor take over. Close to the starting line, along the Gironde, picturesque wooden huts are perched on their piles. They have been used for generations by local fishermen. The large Gironde estuary, 
spreads out to the Atlantic Ocean and benefits from daily tides which bring in a variety of fish. Jean Berlon is an active participant in the Marathon's organization and has a passion for fishing. He built his own hut patiently and skillfully because to be a good fisherman here, you also need to be good with your hands. In principle, we use a lot of recycled materials. The windows you see there are from caravans. We still have to buy some items, but we use a lot of things people have no use for anymore, such as old doors and windows. When we fish, the net is eased down into the water. It's left there for two or three minutes and then pulled up. If we're lucky enough, the fish have swum over it, and all we have to do is lift them out. Thus, Mr. Berlon fishes place, sturgeon, shad, eel, and sometimes sole, depending on the seasons and the tides. At 9.30 in the morning, the 8,000 competitors start out on the roads and paths of the Medoc region to discover the landscapes and the most beautiful chateaus. The fastest ones will run the 42 kilometers in less than two and a half hours. For most of the others, it will take more than five or even six hours if they're pulling a float. Besides the supplying booths that are scattered along the course, 22 wine tasting areas are a must for the runners. Hundreds of bottles and dozens of cases await them. The wooden case is used more and more nowadays to carry the wine because it's convenient, sturdy and aesthetically pleasing. In the middle of the 19th century, it was used for military purposes to move small weaponry. Since then, the manufacturing process has changed very little. Jean-Francois Despujol is very careful about choosing the right raw materials. To make these cases, we naturally use pine wood, since it's found in the Medoc as well as the Grave and Sautern regions. As the forest is located near the vineyards, it's very convenient. Furthermore, the wood is easy to work on, soft and very aesthetic. After drying the pine wood, it's cut out into planks of different lengths, depending on the size of the cases. But the oldest tradition is heat marking that enables the coat of arms and the name of the chateau to be cast into the wood. The clamping and nailing are done by the same machines that put together the cases for ammunition up to the last World War. These cases have become a marketing product in the last 10 years. In fact, they are now a symbol of quality for the great Bordeaux wines. One of the particularities of the marathon is the variety of popular music played by around 50 orchestras. They encourage and enchant runners and onlookers. Their presence creates an unforgettably festive atmosphere.
Numerous chateaus offer their wine in barrels to quench the many participants' thirst. The barrel is an important factor in the winemaking process. It adds subtle notes of hazelnut, black currant, vanilla, coffee, and caramel, as well as tannin. Henri Bart closely supervises the manufacturing, which has remained very traditional. In the making, the essential part is the heating of the barrel, much as when you cook a meal. Depending on whether you barbecue, steam, or roast, the results will be very different. It's the same thing with barrels. If you heat them slowly or fast, for a long or a short time, the aromas can differ. We are always trying to ensure a high level of quality. The heating is adjusted to our clients' needs. Some of them want wooden scents with more or less of a grilled and strong undertone. All this can be obtained through the heating process. The barrel is exclusively made out of the best wood, oak. It's chosen in the forests of the center of France, where centuries ago it was used to build cathedrals and ships for the Royal Navy. The drying out of the oak lasts several months, as it's often soaked in water to eliminate the strongest tannins. The wood is shaped following age-old rules and becomes, little by little, a true work of art that requires a lot of finishing touches. On the Bordeaux barrel, we place wooden hoops, pine blocks, and pegs to make it beautiful. We do everything to make our barrels attractive to the eye. They must also be soft to the touch. The wine growers like to stroke their barrels as they do their women. They must have soft skin. The marathon also enables the thousands of spectators crowded along the course to participate by encouraging the runners. The contestants who are dressed up live out their character convincingly. As the kilometers go by, humor, fantasy, and eccentricity add to the happiness of all. This is incredible, fantastic! Oh, it's fantastic! Number one! Jean! Et de la plume! Et au de feu! The runners quickly make another stop to taste the vintage wines ready for them in the chateau courtyards. Next to the barrels, paper cups, bottles and glasses, more and more carafes can be found. Indeed, they are making a comeback. Crystal glass manufacturers appeared in the 17th century and created the carafes to serve wine. It was a rare and fragile object whose transparency gave the wine its sparkle. A symbol of luxury and status, they decorated the best tables of the kingdom. Crests, coats of arms and monograms were engraved in them. Today, artisans like Marcel Mazouk perpetuate the tradition. This is a future engraving for a carafe. 
Nowadays, they are used more and more because the trend is to drink younger wines than the five and ten year old bottles drunk before. So, better oxygenation is needed to create more body. The piece will develop a soul and a personality. It's an object that will become an heirloom. If it stays in the family, grandchildren might say, it's grandpa's carafe. It's a symbol, a witness to time past, history and memories. In a way, an engraver works for eternity. The contestants finally arrive at the 20th kilometer at about mid-course. It's after 12 and the fastest runners have already arrived. But most participants have stopped at the Chateau Ponte Carnet to laugh, sing, fool around, and especially to taste the wines. When they leave, it's to invade other vineyards, one more prestigious than the other. Each one has its history and traditions. The one crossed now by the runners is owned by Baroness Philippine de Rothschild. The Chateau Mouton Rothschild was founded in 1853, when Baron Nathaniel de Rothschild, of the English branch of the family, bought Chateau Bran Mouton in the Poyac area and gave it his name. A few decades later, his great-grandson, the young Baron Philippe, decided to take the estate's destiny into his own hands and, with his innovative ideas, gave it an international dimension. Vincent Montigo, guardian of the temple, offers us the privilege of a visit in one of the most exclusive cellars in France. Concerning the Chateau Mouton Rothschild, the wines are bottled here. This was initiated by the Baron Philippe de Rothschild in 1924, two years after he arrived at Mouton. He was very young then, barely 20 years old. He decided to master the process up to bottling, almost up to the consumer, whereas before, the wine was sent in barrels to the wine merchant, who was in charge of that. At the same time, he decided to illustrate his label and give it a more personal touch. This is the Chateau Mouton Rothschild 1987, and you can see a different artist's work every time. Here it's Hans Herny for 1987. From 1924 on, a new painter has been called upon every year.
during the marathon, running and partying go together. Even though they're tired, some people don't hesitate to stop and dance for a few minutes. Besides tasting the red wine, one can also drink white wines with oysters from the Arcachon Basin, 50 kilometers away from Poyac. That's why I run this race, just for the oysters. Yeah, not the wine. The wine. Yes, of course. Ah, voilà le caravane. The Madoc region is a peninsula between the ocean and the Gironde. Maritime transport is part of its history. In fact, the Bordeaux port ensured links with North Africa and South America, whereas the Poyac, Bourg and Bly harbors were for local transportation. At the beginning of the century, many ships, such as this Gabar, conveyed the wine barrels. It is the last one which still sails on the Gironde. Marc Peter has created an association to restore and save this exceptional boat. It's a ship that was used to transport merchandise, but it was replaced by trucks and the railways that were faster and met shorter deadlines. Another drawback was the sailing that was subject to tides and the elements. It's a boat that is 18 meters long, weighs 30 tons and can carry double its weight. One of its characteristics is that we can bring down the mast to go under bridges. I have a passion for the Gironde estuary. I'm not from here, but I fell in love as soon as I saw it. I find these abandoned islands very poetic. The race is now coming to an end. The contestants' legs are heavy, and so are their arms. The only target now is to get to the finish line. It's now time to dwell on this magnificent day. Running is like eternity. It's very long, especially toward the end. <laughs> It'll be an apotheosis because there are so many people waiting at the finish line. It's great. What a marathon again this year. The Maduk Marathon is unique. Indeed, it is able to bring together men and women of all nationalities and races, alone or in groups, to share in the celebration of humor, joy, sports, wine, and life.